Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and our program, uh, courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, product of uh, the collaboration of uh, Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Well, today we're going to take another case uh, from the uh, realm of GI pathology. This is a 48-year-old woman with rather long-standing dyspepsia and abnormal appearing gastric mucosa. Uh, so that led, of course, uh, to uh, some endoscopic biopsies, as might be uh, anticipated. And uh, we can see at very low power that these are quite abnormal. Uh, they're purple, they're blue, uh, very cellular, uh, and we don't, in fact, see any normal appearing gastric mucosa in these fragments. So let's take a look and see if we can invite, identify for sure where we are. Uh, well, here we have some surface epithelium. Uh, we can see there are some glandular uh, crypts here. Um, and we see here a few cells within these uh, uh, crypts as well, uh, glands. Um, and then surrounding them, we see displacing uh, them a, a rather a dense infiltrate of these uh, uh, blue uh, cells. Uh, here's another cluster of a few uh, cells within the uh, epithelial compartment uh, that did not appear to be normal epithelial cells. Uh, so so-called lymphoepithelial lesion type of appearance. Here's a few more here. Uh, we'll look a little further and see what other um, findings we can uh, derive from this uh, sample. Um, and let's go down maybe uh, on here. So again, uh, although this is uh, the sections probably are a little bit thicker than optimal uh, for uh, uh, evaluation, we can see that these uh, uh, cells are displacing and pushing aside the uh, uh, epithelial component. Uh, and again, here we see some clear cells uh, within the epithelial compartment. That's a nice uh, lymphoepithelial lesion. So we're looking at most likely a, a mucosa associated lymphoid proliferation. But I think it raises the uh, consideration of what we ought to be thinking about uh, with a uh, blue cell infiltrate within the gastric uh, wall, a gastric mucosa. So that differential. Uh, would include lymphoid aggregates or hyperplasia. Uh, it could include small cell carcinoma, both primary and metastatic, though admittedly small cell carcinomas of the uh, gastro, uh, of the stomach are exceedingly rare. And then the most more common lymphoma. Now the majority of these will be low-grade uh, maltomas, <clears throat> uh, but uh, diffuse large B cell, a mantle cell, occasionally even follicular center cell uh, lesions can occur here. And then lastly, we uh, go down the list to the more uh, uh, rare and uh, extraordinary lesions, uh, the primitive neuroectodermal tumor, mast cell disease, other sorts of things. So in looking at uh, lymphoma, uh, I think there's important uh, questions to sort of help you begin to think. Uh, does this displace and destroy glandular tissue? Uh, that can help to differentiate hyperplasia from lymphoma. Uh, are the cells large or small? Uh, is there germinal center formation? Uh, do we see lymphoepithelial lesions? These gen generally favor lower grade lesions. And then lastly, uh, we can go to the immunophenotype and think about the proliferation index. So in our case, uh, we do have some uh, immunohistochemical stains to evaluate. Uh, we can see from the control tissue here on the left that this is a B cell marker, this is CD20. And obviously, in our uh, target tissues, uh, this is staining the majority of the cells uh, very densely, very brightly. Uh, CD20 is a wonderful stain uh, for uh, sensitivity uh, and uh, usually leaves no doubt as to whether or not it's positive or negative. Comparing that with uh, CD3, uh, here you can see in the control highlighting the T cell areas. Uh, and there are far fewer cells here, a few, um, and uh, uh, but uh, virtually uh, the majority of the cells obviously are T cells. Now in reactive hyperplasias, uh, normal uh, lymphoid aggregates and so forth, 
uh, this ratio would be reversed and the majority would be T cells and there'd be very, very rare B cells uh, in that infiltrate. So this alone tells us we're dealing with a um, malignant lesion, a clonal population of B cells that's uh, abnormal for the location. Now, going to from there, um, I think it's uh, helpful to look and see uh, what is our proliferation index. And we don't necessarily do this all the time, uh, but uh, this is a helpful marker. And here we can see the control tissues. It uh, labels the germinal centers, uh, which are expected to be highly proliferative. But this is a really remarkable uh, stain in our search situation because this um, quite, uh, quite helpfully moves this lesion from being a low-grade uh, malt lymphoma to potentially being a higher-grade lesion. Um, and so uh, as we see this portion of uh, cells that are staining with the marker, uh, we should probably put aside consideration of just uh, low-grade marginal, uh, marginal zone lymphoma uh, and begin to think about uh, large cell types. Could this be uh, diffuse large B cell? Could this be follicular center cell? Uh, could this be other uh, kinds of problems? Um, and in fact, uh, looking at, at the uh, BCL6, which also tends to highlight uh, the germinal centers, um, and is uh, very frequently expressed in the diffuse large B cell lymphoma, we can see that this marker also is expressed quite strongly uh, in our tissues. So um, this is, uh, for contrast, uh, this is another lesion um, that uh, presents um, far less florid an example. Uh, here we see just a small lymphoid area here, a little bit of lymphoid infiltration here, maybe some ulceration, uh, maybe a little bit of tissue here, but we don't have the displacement and effacement of the normal gastric architecture. So is this a maltoma or is this just a lymphoid infiltrate associated maybe with H. pylori and intestinal metaplasia that we see elsewhere? Well, the things that can help you are identifying lymphoepithelial lesions, um, maybe there's a few lymphocytes here in this, um, so that might uh, steer you in that direction. Um, this is a, a situation where these are sp small and focal, where um, clonal analysis uh, is not going to be particularly helpful because a small aggregate like this may very well be clonal and still be benign. It's when it becomes diffuse and widespread that we would worry about clonality. Again, we do see a few isolated single cells uh, that look like lymphocytes uh, in the mucosa here, uh, but it's not clear that these are clusters. Now, maybe here we have the beginnings of a lymphoepithelial lesion as these cells seem to be clustering here. So this is kind of the other extreme from the example we uh, started out with, where very subtle changes may be present. Um, and uh, it may be very difficult to uh, firmly establish the diagnosis. And in that situation, certainly follow-up is advisable. Uh, treatment of any uh, associated H. pylori uh, is advisable and so forth to see if we can get regression uh, as well. We don't see a lot of H. pylori here, but we've had metaplasia, which can diminish uh, the amount of uh, viable organi organisms that we might see. So marginal zone lymphoma involving the stomach, so-called malt lymphoma, typically arises in the setting of H. pylori and therefore often will respond to treatment of that disorder. That is with the low-grade varieties. Uh, later transformation to diffuse large B-cell lymphoma can occur, um, and those situations often have these translocations. Uh, these may be present early, um, and if so, may also predict uh, that the, the lesion will not be uh, responsive to antibiotic therapy. Search for coexistent carcinoma or other lesions like intestinal metaplasia and so forth uh, should be conducted to uh, ensure that you've uh, provided all the diagnostic information that the biopsies or uh, other tissue may provide. So uh, that uh, nicely summarizes our case today. Our sign out is a mucosa associated lymphoproliferative disorder but of high-grade type, uh, most consistent with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma 
uh, of the stomach. Uh, and that, of course, based on the uh, proliferation rate and the uh, BCL6 staining. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and uh, please subscribe so you uh, won't miss any future uh, videos that we uh, intend to post. And if you like this, please share it with your friends uh, and colleagues, and uh, we always welcome your comments. If you want to uh, comment below, you can do that. You can also reach out to me directly uh, at the, the uh, uh, Facebook or email noted there. Also, um, uh, if you'd like to study these slides yourselves, uh, check the uh, link posted below, um, and uh, you can uh, find a, a link to the, those slides and have a chance to look them over uh, on your own uh, monitor and at your leisure. So until next time, thanks for joining us, and we'll hope to see you again.